Hello witches, it's Keldon. I hope you're all doing well. This is going to be a video response to a video um, made by Palm Tree Bewitchery, Brittany, about um, plastic witches. The idea of aesthetics and who's a real witch and all that great stuff. And I'm going to be doing some cooking while I do it, so I apologize for waving this knife around in your face. It's out of love, not scary, like stabby, stabby, threatening. Um, but Brittany made a video um, about this topic, and I haven't heard this particular term, plastic witch, um, but I've seen a lot of attitudes expressed about the concept so the plastic witch is somebody who um, is seen as not being a serious practitioner of witchcraft. They're only into um, the way they look and posting cute Instagram pictures. It's a fashion statement. It's a trend. It's not a serious, like, spiritual, religious, magical, whatever practice. Um, this is nothing new. That's the first thing that came to my mind watching this um watching Britney's video is that like this attitude has been around for a long time. I think it's gotten more attention and it's gained more momentum as we've entered the age of social media. Um, but I don't think it's something that's completely um, new to the witchcraft community. And we can see this. So like, um, Something that right away pops in my mind is the big, um, the big uproar that happens, I think last year's, I think it's already been a year, regarding the Sephora witch kit. Um, so Sephora was going to release this um, set, this witch kit that had a tarot deck and a rose quartz and some perfume and some white sage and people were pissed um, for a lot of reasons. And some of them I think were pretty valid, um, but a lot of them I thought were just really big overreactions. Um, it was, it's similar, I think, to the reactions that people had when Silver Ravenwolf released the Teen Witch Kit, like, way back, way back in the day. Um, but anyways, I made a video about that, so I'm not going to go into too much depth, but it, basically it's the idea um, that people aren't serious practitioners. Um, right. There was the meme going around for a while. That was like Becky and her sage from Whole Foods. That's just another expression of this. Um, and one thing I want to point out is that when you really sit back ooh, and take a look, a lot of this animosity is geared towards young women. And I think that there's a lot of issues around gender and misogyny wrapped up in that. Um, so consider, for example, that a lot of these people who are maybe plastic or aesthetic witches, like they are taking on the the label of witch because they find it empowering. They find something powerful in that, just like the rest of us. Um, taking on the label of witch is in itself a political stance. You are putting yourself out there as other, as part of the counterculture. Um, and that's super cool. And I think super necessary in today's political climate. We need all the empowerment we can get. And we need all the witches we can get. Witchcraft is super expensive and super elastic. Nobody has ever owned witchcraft. No single person or group has ever um, been like the keeper of witchcraft. It's a term that belongs to whoever decides to take it on. Um, and that's okay. It doesn't devalue your craft. It doesn't devalue your practice or how that um, term or that label um, fits you unless you let it. You're the one that has power over that. Um, so what Becky is doing with her sage at Whole Foods really shouldn't be affecting your practice um, unless you're letting it. And that's the same thing with people who um, whose practices just in general look different, right? Um, what uh, Hannah, the Wiccan high priestess, two states over is doing has really no bearing on what I'm doing and my relationship with my spirits. Um, unless 
I'm letting it unless I'm ruminating and perseverating on her practice and how it's different from mine and how that's not right because I'm right. Well, nobody's more right than the rest of us. We're all just doing our thing. Um, so really this idea of the plastic witch is not, not necessarily new. Um, and it's complete bullshit in my opinion. Nobody has the authority to dictate who's a real witch and who isn't, right? This is coming off the heels of my last video where somebody was trying to tell me what spirits I work with or don't work with. Nobody has that authority over you. Um, unless, put, I'll put the caveat in there, unless you're um, talking about a specific tradition, right? So like if I'm like, oh, I'm I'm identifying as a Gardenarian Wiccan, but I've never been initiated into Gardenarian Wicca, then somebody does have the authority to be like, well, actually you're not. You haven't received initiation, um, which is not to say that I'm not Wiccan. I'm just not part of a specific tradition that, because that tradition requires a certain initiation or a certain step to be included in that. Um, I'm opening all the cans. Did I say, I'm making pumpkin soup. I don't know if I said what I was making. Anyways, so those are just some initial thoughts about plastic witches. Um, going into the more like consumerism aspect of it, um, I can, and again, I can only talk from my own experience. Um, and, but the idea again with plastic witches is that like, oh, they're going out and they're just buying things and it's all about material goods and what you have and um I want to take a step back in time to when I was a um newer witch um, well not newer just younger when I was a younger witch um and I was on YouTube not um I wasn't um, part of the community but I was watching a lot of videos and one thing that I noticed and that started to bother me was that um, the majority of videos seemed to be about um, like showing off tools and altars and haul videos and there wasn't a lot of content about practice like what are you doing in your practice besides buying things um, and that really bothered me it also bothered me because this was a time when I was starting to feel really disenfranchised by the popular books out there about witchcraft because they seem to spend a lot of time talking about tools. They would always throw in like a quick sentence like, oh, tools aren't necessary, but now we're going to spend a lot of time talking about them. And I was like, well, I have all these tools, but it's still not doing it for me. Um, so... That's and and I don't think anybody's ever saying like oh like you like you absolutely actually do need these tools and without them like you're nothing, um, but I think there's an underlying like interpreted context around that. Um, so for me, I'm really big on like being mindful about what I'm buying, what I'm bringing into my home because I've gone through a lot of stuff um, and I've had to get rid of a lot of stuff because I realized, wow, this is just clutter for me. Um, when I go, um, when I go places now, so like, let's say um, I go to the local occult shop and I see things and I'm like, wow, this is really beautiful and cool. And maybe at first glance, I'm like, oh, I need to buy this. But then I have to ask myself, okay, what meaning is this going to bring into my life? What purpose does this item have? I'm really, I'm a really utilitarian person. And I think that that's a really common trait um, within traditional witchcraft. But like, I want things to serve a purpose. Um, and, and that could be just be to look pretty. Um, but I already have enough things that their purpose is to look pretty. I need things that have um, a function. Um, you can see this a lot in like the tools of traditional witchcraft. There's not a lot of tools that are just there to be symbolic or to um, just sit there. They also serve a functional purpose, right? Um, so 
But that also kind of gets into like the Marie Kondo thing. Like, does it spark joy in my life? Is this something that's just going to sit there and collect dust? Um, or is it something that I'm going to be using a lot? Um, and whatnot. So that's my approach to buying things now. Um, but that doesn't mean that other people are wrong. Um, right? Because it's your money. It's your house. It's your stuff. Those are your choices to make. Um, they're not anybody else's. Um, so some people might be really minimalist and some people might like a lot of clutter. Um, it brings them joy and meaning and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't necessarily mean because somebody enjoys stuff that they're like spiritually devoid or that um, like they're not they're not practicing authentically because they have stuff or that they're weak, right? Because if you need tools, then like your mind isn't strong enough or whatever. I think ultimately we just need to stop being dicks to each other and talking about, oh, you're not a real witch because you do this. Oh, well, you do this different than I do it. So you're wrong. Um, fuck that. It's stupid. It's 2019. We've got way bigger shit to worry about than like somebody going and buying a bunch of Halloween decorations from Michael's. Like the Amazon rainforest is like on fucking fire. We have a horrible monster as a president. Like, and this is what we're focusing on. I think that's the, that's the real issue here. It's not what people are buying or whatever. It's the fact that like we're ignoring all of the bigger things in life. We're ignoring the fact that we should be building each other up and strengthening ourselves because we need to like think about it like if we just got over all these petty differences and like could come together as like a community of witches like we could really get some good shit done um and that's a, also a statement that applies to society at large um but yes so plastic witches aesthetic witches blah 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 who cares if somebody feels empowered that's great um, if somebody's starting to get into realms where things are problematic, like cultural appropriation or whatever, um, you know, that's a similar but different conversation. Um, so these are just my rambles about plastic witches. I hope you enjoyed. Um, what are your thoughts? Let me know below um, or make, make your own video. Um, I know that some people won't agree with me and that's okay. Um, some people, um, because here's the other thing. I should have said this too, but now I'm just thinking of it, is that we naturally feel really protective of witchcraft and the the mantle of the witch because we're really passionate people and we're really passionate about this. Um, so it's natural that like we feel that kind of sense of defensiveness of like, what is this person doing? Like, like they're saying they're a witch, but um, you know, their practice doesn't look like mine. Um, but we need to get over that. Um, we need to process that and move through it, figure out what that defensiveness is ultimately about. I think for a lot of people who are running around and gatekeeping and policing witchcraft and, you know, determining who's a real witch and who's not, ultimately, I think it comes down to low self-esteem and the fact that they don't feel like a real witch. Because people who are feeling fulfilled in their craft and in their practice don't need to do that. They don't need to rip somebody apart because they are like, I don't know, doing yoga and working with crystals and saying they're a witch and you're over here making blood pact with demons. Like, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, because it's only, it only affects you if you let it. So, yeah. Well, I hope you're having a good day. Um, and until next time, take care.